long time ago, our people believed that we didn't have hooligans, so our people used to make a trip up to Kitimat to make the grease. Until more recently, the hooligans have come to Bellacoola. The song was is sung in Kitimat or Kitlu. It tells, uh, or it was sung to welcome the hooligans. The dancer used to wear a cedar bark cape and dance along the river, along the bank of the river, to welcome the first run of hooligans. the guys uh, to um, come with us in the punt. Some guys to go on the other boat and put rocks on the boat and start chasing fish up. The other crew would be getting ready with the same net, take it off and put it back on the, the right way. And um, have more or less some guys up the top end of the, the river scaring fish down. And uh, as soon as you get them where you want them, then uh, you have good anchor guys like uh, Bob here. <laughs> you leave them on one end and then you or you have a few guys down the other end to um, take the other end in and start pulling. It's uh, it's a lot quicker. You get your work done faster um, than um, the trap nets. You, you can probably fill up your bin in one day and then be done with it. Uh, but if you're not too successful in seining, then uh, you have to go back again or keep trying. It's not as easy as it sounds, eh? Uh, I guess you guys were aware that we caught some snags up there and you, know, you just fish wherever you think it, you know, there isn't any. And uh, if you get a snag, then you lose your fish and you have to try again. It usually gets harder after the first try because the uh, fish are more wary of it and don't bother coming into the, um, the smoother waters and they stay out in a swift end. So it takes a little bit more to try and get them the second time and remember where your snags are. And uh, from there, you, if you can get your load, then you just pull it in. You know, if you're lucky, you get it in one day. If you're not, then you go back for the next two days. It took us three days to fill our bin up. And this year, we teamed yeah, up with sure. three different families. Eh? There was myself, Bob, and um, Godfrey who teamed up, so we divided it up between ourselves. You know, it just doesn't go to one person, and he gets the majority, whether it's you know, his cooking box or his pump or anything. Like it's just um, shared between, evenly between each of us. Everybody does their work and um, takes the responsibilities. As Mike was saying, that, you know, the guys have to go out. I, there's no way I think one person can prob probably do it in that length of time. It'd be too exhausted. <laughs> that the old people used to use on the bottom of the, for that bin for the ulikins. And that's grass from the tight flats, the lawn grass, and they're dead in the spring. And they pick that up. I've seen this done in Kitlope as a little girl. But here in Balakula, we use the cedar boughs. 
so they won't get too dirty. This is why. And the other thing is, my way of thinking, if I'm right or wrong, you know, on the little bows, little bigger things like our fingers, sticks on it, that makes a crevice for the, for the blood to drain to. Sometimes it takes just one day to get the bins full. Sometimes a week, two weeks. It depends how much the piss is. Takes a long time. And in the meantime, the boys will be getting the clay. The box is made out of wood for the sides, eh? the front and everything. All that's metal is just the bottom, so you have to put the clay on so that the fire doesn't escape out and burn your box and um, you put reinforcing bars on the bottom, about three or four of them, or in, depending how big your box is. So that, that's what the clay is for. Maybe one of the mans will really clean that pot up. After have to use a chore girl to clean whatever rust that's in that container. And then they have to really wash it good to get everything out, even the steel wool stuff has to be off. And in the meantime, too, they get wood, like cedar or altar, anything like that. They saw it up and they pile it besides that because it needs a lot of wood. Time the Olikins will lay for about a week. together here when we make grease. Like if Margaret's time time for cooking, well, we pitch in, we get the wood, we get the fire going. Everybody do their bit and somebody pitch camp. Oh, yeah. Get ready for the long hours. And in turn, we get to eat some of our, uh, what we call uh, grease, grease buns. We use it a lot in our food, like, dry fish, the long, what do you call them? Fillets, when it's fully dry, you dip it in oligan grease and eat it that way, and eat it with potatoes, and that's your meal. And if you have heron spawn, you put oligan grease with the heron spawn and eat it that way with seaweed and, and a potato. But if you have just plain seaweed, you put oligan grease in with the seaweed and water, it, and that's your meal again. Is with every fruit that they ate, the Indians, let's say raspberries, squeezed raspberries, squeezed blackberries, blueberries, anything, mm -hmm. even the stink berries that they get, 
I know my dad used to make that, um, cut up those oranges and apples and yes. put it in um, those big pots, yes. fill it up with water and put grease in there. And Mix it with it? Yeah, and you just eat it. Even. Just everybody got up in the middle of the table to eat that. <laughs> you just and get your spoon. Delicious. Yeah. If you seem to have tuberculosis or whatever you think you have in, by coughing all the time, they take one teaspoon every morning and one go to bed, like two teaspoons a day. After you put that, that ply board on top of the ulicans, after they put it in, and then they already have water on their sides in big containers or pails or whatever they have already besides the box. And then they keep opening this to see if any, any spot really boils. If any spot really boils, they pour a pail of water to that. Then let it simmer. If you boil the oolicans, you don't get any oolicans grease out of it. It's just like any other oil. If you boil it and you pour it, pour it in water, you just get bubbles in it. That's how it'll go. And it gets very delicate at that stage, so you have to keep watching it. If you just, you know, you just can't go and grab a cup of coffee. Somebody's got to be always there and watching it, keeping the fire just right. You can't have too big of a flame so that, or too low of a flame, otherwise your cooking will just go. This keeps up for a good three hours to four hours, like what I said. Look after it until you think it's time to shake it up. You put more water in, into it again before you shake it up. The longer you cook ulikin grease in a pot, I mean in this big pot, the better the grease it is. If you, if you cook it too quick, like four hours, the grease is not cooked right. That's why it gets a different taste to it quick. It seems to be a raw taste. After they shake it up, they cover it again. Let the grease warm up. And that's about an hour to two again, isn't it? Yeah. To let it form up like that. I don't know which doctor came here. He said, are you giving your kids all again grease? And he said, yeah, we have it just about every day, even for breakfast. And he said, oh, if you're doing that, then you don't need to give them cod liver oil. That's just as good as cod liver. In fact, it's just like cod liver oil. And uh, so therefore, then my dad says, okay, he says, hey, come on, come here. He says that, and he opened the cook stove, took the, what, what was left in the cod liver oil, poured it into the fire, and the fire went, you know. And I was looking, and said, oh, we don't have to take that anymore. He says, no, as long as you have lots of grease. <laughs> we said, sure, <laughs> give us the <a> grease. <laughs> but that, that was one of, you know, I thought, that was the best thing I liked about only getting grease that he got rid of cod liver oil. <laughs> <laughs> My granny used to use it in just about everything. She put it in her cakes, in her bread. It's you know, good. it's good for bread. You could taste it in just about anything. She, you know, after after the bread was cooked, she just rub it on like some people would rub butter on a loaf of bread, and that's what she used to do. And you could taste it in her cakes. Eh? Any homemade cakes she used to make, she used only getting grease instead of anything else. Yeah, my mom used it in her when she bakes bread. She puts it right in and mix it with the dough and when it cooked and when after it's cooked it stays soft, the whole thing stays soft, whereas some homemade breads are crumple after sitting for about two or three hours. It brings the tenderness out and makes it keep longer. The other thing that you they use ulican grease is with my great grand uncle Jack King George. He used to make spoons, wooden spoons. When he's through making that wooden spoon after he used that, you know, to make it smooth, Sandpaper. sandpapered, then he says, it's good now. Then he'd be eating, a, let's say, something like a cup of grease or less in a dipper. He really makes it hot. In goes the spoon, the whole thing. Then he rubs it, rubs it, rubs it. That's good now, he says, that is good now. Why do you do that? I said that to him as a, as a child, long ago, he said. So 
so nothing can go through it more in. That's what he said. That's and it. they make ice cream out of it, too. In the old days, they used a canoe, one of those canoes, a new one. And if somebody had a feast, a feast, a potlatch feast, or whatever the feast there is, and they'd get a man that knows how to pound. Now, they put the, the good snow into this canoe, pound it up, pound it up. After they pound it, they pour the grease on top of it. They pound it more, more snow. They pound it again, more grease. This kept up till it's full, the whole length of the canoe. Then they cut it up into one pound, just like a butter. That one. And it's solid. It's like as if it's solid frozen. They give it to each person that's sitting down. The widows, you know, <laughs> that couldn't get any grease, they know about this, that they're going to have this ice cream, you know. And then they take a little pail or whatever container they have, in the old days, you know. And then they put what they get with the children, they put it in. When it melts, the grease is there. 